Welcome back to the lab, guys. Shadow here today. We're going to be going over something that's uh, pretty interesting. It has to deal with Windows domains. We're going to be going over group policy objects, basically what they are, how they're you know needed, and what it can do for you. So stick around. All right, so let's jump right in. So. We'll Group policy objects came about in the Windows 2000 operating system error. Basically, they were kind of used as a way to control settings and display functions and behavior and things like that for hardware and for users. So group policy objects have a way that they can apply. There's usually two ways you apply them. You either apply them to the hardware via a computer policy or you apply it to the user via a user policy. And the way you do that is you can actually link the GPO to organizational units and then select the GPO type. So let's go ahead and I'm going to hop into one of my domain controllers here. Let me go ahead and bring up one of my connections. So if you notice in here, I'm on one of my servers. I'm going to go ahead and this is the server manager on a 2016 server. We're going to go ahead and go over here to tools up in the right hand corner. I'm going to go on down to group policy management. Let's bring up some of these group policies. Let's give it just a second here. So here's my domain, Bodhi-TX, everything that I do. And I have these different policies that do different things. These are all actually, I believe, map drives up here at the top. But I don't have anything too intricate. But if you actually want to see all the group policies that are on a single domain, the best way to do that is go down here. And you can click these group policy objects, and you can see all the different types of objects that I've made and tested. And the best way to actually go ahead and, and look at these is you can actually click on it and see where it's linked. So right here, these links are actually showing where that GPO has been registered to, to as an OU. So if I go up to here, BitLocker, Bodhi Computers, anything that's in Bodhi Computers is going to end up getting the BitLocker GPO. Right now I also have the Bodhi Entertainment and Game Shares and IT Shares, such like that. That is actually put at the root of my domain. And the reason I put it at the root of the domain is basically saying that no matter where you are in the domain, I want you to have these policies applied. And that's why you'd want to put them at the top of the domain. That's really the only time you ever want to put something at the top of the domain. Say you're needing to deploy like an antivirus or something like that. That's a good idea. But even then, that's kind of an iffy one because you do have servers and such. But a lot of times we do put, you know, Windows firewall policies, such like that. We'll also put uh, drive shares, as you're seeing here, things like that that allow, you know, that can be put on a server or put on a workstation, something that's not going to be as such a big deal. But you definitely want to look into building your OU structure to where you have different organizational units to kind of separate and secure the different users and hardware that you're going to be using. So if you notice, I have my servers here and I have different things. I've got my VDI, different things. The servers are here. And the reason I did that is so that way if I create group policies, I can go ahead and link them to these different organizational units. And based off of what's in that organizational unit, whether it is a computer profile or a user profile, and what the GPO is said to do, it will apply to those profiles. So let's go ahead and I just kind of want to look over one of my GPOs. So I'm going to look over the game share and show you guys kind of the basics of what this does. So actually, before I go in and edit it, the best way to actually look over a GPO is go ahead and click on it. And you can actually come over here to settings and it'll actually generate the report and kind of show you what it does. So if we see here, we've got some general details, links, security filtering, delegation. We can click this show all right on the right hand side. And if you notice, boom, there's a group policy. It blows up everything. It kind of lets us know, hey, here's the owner. Here's the unique ID for it. Here's the links right now. Are they enabled? Is it enforced? Which I'll talk about enforcing here in a second. We'll go over that. It's a big deal. And you you know when we get into that I'll go over why right down here in security filtering basically what I'm saying is that this GPO can only apply to certain user groups and computers which are these right here down here at delegation this allows me to basically say this uh, GPO is delegated to these user groups but then right down here if you notice this general is actually not that big of a deal that's the general part of the GPO what we're actually worried about is what does the GPO actually do so here I have no computer configuration set up, meaning that this is not a computer GPO. Meaning that if you look down here, we have user configuration and we have all of this information. What I have it set up as is, and I'm saying here is, anytime a user logs in on my domain, I want you to go ahead and map a drive as G and map it to this location. So what's gonna happen anytime a user logs in on the domain, it's gonna go ahead and create and map that drive based off that location. 
and this is user settings. So it doesn't matter what machine the user logs into. If they log into a server, they log into a computer, they log into a VDI machine, no matter where they go, they're going to get that ma drive mapped as drive G. To give you an idea, same thing happens here with the IT share. It gets mapped as T. It's also user configuration. Now, let's go ahead. Let me try to find one that I've made that is computer configuration. No settings set on that yet. Uh, here we go, the emulator GPO. So this comes in and this actually affects a computer and actually affects its terminal services and what it allows it to do. So, and this enables remote FX, so that way I can actually use 3D RDS. That's for a whole other video though. So what this means as a computer configuration, if I were to put this at the top of my domain, this would apply to every single computer in my domain. So usually something like this, it's very specific that's enabling remote FX on an RDS server. You'd want it to apply to, you know, say your RDS servers. So right up here we have Bodhi RDS. This would be basically, and, and then the emulator. See how here actually looks like I already have it applied. That's where we want to apply it, is this GPO would get applied to that OU, meaning that any servers or any machines or computers, as the OU states, that are put inside Bodhi em uh, emulator organizational unit will have this GPO applied. So that's the big difference that you know that really messes a, a lot of people when they get into group policies is they'll go in and they're like, oh yeah, I can map a drive and they'll go build it as computer configuration when it's meant to be built as a user. There are a lot of things you can do on both. You can map drives, printers and such and do a lot of different folder redirection and everything on computer policies just as you can on user policies. So you have to really make sure and think about, okay, what's the best way to handle this? Am I, is it going to be by computers and everybody, you know, the computers in this location all need this? Or is it the users? And then as they move around to different locations, is that user or is there a group that need things? And that's, the, you know, what you really need to think about when you're building a group policy object is what is my organizational units? How am I going to affect? Who am I going to tag? And things like that. And how is this going to benefit me and the end users with their job? So... I hope that uh, I kind of broke some things down pretty easily. I hope I was able to go over group policies and help you guys figure out, you know, what they are and the basics of group policies. I do have some more videos I'm going to be doing. Uh, have a lot in the works, a lot more series and such. That I'm going to be going over, you know, setting up domains from scratch, building these group policies and uh, things like that, and really kind of getting more advanced. So go ahead and stick around, guys. Uh, there's a lot more that's going to be happening, especially with the new year coming. I do apologize for not you know, having a lot of videos. It's been between work and family, holidays, everything going on. I've been trying to do as much as I can. I did want to go ahead and I'm, I do have some in the works, such as this one that I'm working on to get done. So if you guys just you know, go ahead and just keep holding out. I'm, I'm, I've got a lot more in the works. So thanks for sticking around, though, everybody. And as always, I'll see you in the lab.